It's more special. Start with a Stella. In week one of The Tastemaster, we welcomed eight aspiring foodies into studio for a glimpse of what life will be like on Afternoon Express as the winner of our foodie search. Their first challenge was to create an Instagrammable dish, which showcased both their personality and their role as a Tastemaster. It was soon clear that the social media know-how necessary for this position proved even too much for a trained chef like Chaba Sweet Genius Mukake, the first contestant to be eliminated. Week two, our seven remaining contestants got to grips with sustainable cooking at the Boschendal Vintage Wine Estate, where Chef Christian Campbell practices the latest farm-to-table dining. The challenge he set was to create a dazzling seasonal menu with honey as the hero ingredient. Imtiaz beat Alex to win the coveted Stella Artois chalice, while McDonald, Toomey and Charmaine made the grade. On the downside, Nekara's taste for chili got the judges all hot and bothered, but Masejo's choice of sirloin was too much to digest and ended her taste master journey. Our final six were then split into teams to take on the Ned Bank Golf Challenge. But not everyone was happy with their pairing. Imtiaz chose Alex, Charmaine took Tumi, which left McDonald and Nekara. About as good a mix as oil and water. Steakhouse maestro Steve Maresh stepped up to mentor our contestants on a three-course casual gourmet menu. Charmaine and Tumi survived their cold start, only to see Imtiaz and Alex take the Stella Artois chalices. Despite a world-class recovery, Big Mac and Nakara's differences proved a bridge too far, and they had to hang up their aprons. The remaining contenders attended the Eat Out Awards, where 2018 Chef of the Year Gregory Zarnecki challenged them to recreate a winning recipe from this year's event to impress the judging panel, which included guest judge Chef Marco Jansa. It wasn't all fun and games. Alex dished a side order of shade with his recipe. Charmaine went Middle Eastern and Imtiaz gambled on Chef Gregory's award-winning dessert. Rising to the occasion, Tumi finally broke the mold and won her first chalice. Charmaine and Alex survived, but things fell apart for Imtiaz and his deconstructed dessert, and the fan favorite had to hang up his apron. Which put Tumi, Alex and Charmaine in the semis. Their task, mentored by guest judge Abigail Donnelly, was to cook up an original market-ready dish at a famed Cape Town night market. Alex won the crowd, but his short rib was his Achilles heel, with Tumi and Charmaine making it an all-ladies final, beginning in Belgium. Arriving in a fairy tale city in the heart of Europe where they don't speak the language, Tumi and Charmaine would need to follow their noses, to navigate by aroma, be won over by sights, sounds, and above all, the unrivaled flavors of Belgium. Woohoo! Top two, I'm in the final, y'all. I made it to the finale. I'm so excited, I'm so proud of myself. I didn't think that I'd make it this far. I couldn't be happier to go into the final with anyone else but Charmaine. We had a vibe, and I know it's a competition, someone's gonna leave, but I think we've been feeding off each other, so that actually helped me a lot as well. Dumi is quite a strong contender, so I am a little bit worried, but I know we are very different cooks, so all I can do is just play to my strengths. 
I am going to Belgium. I've never been out of the country, so for me this is life-changing because I get to do something I've always wanted to do, which is travel, and I get to go to the home of Stella. Just getting a jacket, because apparently it's very cold in Belgium. This is epic for me. I look forward to whatever they're gonna teach us. I know that there's probably a secret challenge in there somewhere. I'm packing for Belgium and I'm so excited. I've never been, I mean, I've traveled quite extensively, but Belgium has never really been on my radar. But now that I'm in the finale, I'm so excited. I've got some foodie magazines that are gonna keep me company on the plane. It's a very long flight, so gotta be prepared. This is my son's favorite toy, and I've been taking it with me everywhere since the competition started, and it seems to be my lucky charm. Whew. Off we go. We've searched for someone with a talent for bringing us together. An artist who works with food, deco, and atmosphere. Someone who knows the right ingredients to make every occasion special. Welcome to week six and the finale of The Tastemaster. This week, our search has us saying bonjour as we find ourselves in the wintry home of Stella Artois in Belgium, the brewery where it all started, but also the magical Christmas market here in Brussels. And then we head back home to our culinary capital in Franschhoek. There, the final challenge awaits our contestants as they get accompanied by some of the world and the globe's most celebrated chefs. We've just landed in Belgium, and the first thing that hits me, the cold. I don't really know a lot about Belgium. All I know is waffles, fries, apparently, and, oh, Brussels sprouts. I'm really happy to be here, and I look forward to what the final has in store for me. To me, Charmaine. Two of you stand before me in the beautiful hearts of Belgium. But two cooks is one too many for our kitchen back home. And by the end of our final challenge, there can only be one taste master. To decide, we've brought you halfway across the world to where many food aficionados would consider one of the centers of the culinary world, Belgium. Here, you'll experience a festival of aromas, tastes, art, and culture. This will serve as your inspiration for when you return home to create the ultimate occasion for a very special guest list. Now I'm gonna hand you an envelope with a message from our judges, Greg and Zola, on what they expect from you in this final challenge. Why Belgium? Well, because it's the home of Stella Artois, and it's only fitting that this competition ends the way it started, with a Stella. The Belgians are also celebrated for their chocolate, waffles, fries, and fine food. And if I can sum up in a couple of words the essence of Belgian cuisine, it will be the generosity of German cooking with some French finesse. They take the best taste from around the world and use local and seasonal ingredients to make it their own, much like the eclectic cuisine of South Africa. It must evoke the spirit of the season as we celebrate it here and marry that to a menu inspired by your Belgian experience. You must also decide on a theme for your table. And prove once and for all to us, your guests, and the whole of South Africa who the real taste master is. Wow, this is going to be quite a challenge, taking South African food and infusing some Belgian twist to it. The thoughts running through my head right now are how am I going to be able to merge Belgium and South Africa into a Christmas feast? I need to try and figure that out soon. I can't wait to get started and try out some Belgian delicacies. It makes sense why Belgian waffles are so nice. They make them quite differently. We make a batter. They actually make a dough. Thank you. <laughs> so nice and warm in this weather. It is. Mmm, <laughs> this is so delicious. It's fluffy, it's light, and there's so many different toppings that you can put on, but powdered sugar or icing sugar is definitely a classic. I don't even have words, it's so good. Mm. I'm glad I tried this one out. 
<laughs> Another thing I've always wanted to try is the boudin, which is a signature sausage made in Belgium. Finally, I get to try one today. Very different from the South African sausage. A lot more herbs and flavors, and <laughs> it's very good. Along with their warm festive treats, any self-respecting Belgian insists on a perfectly chilled lager. And the ladies went in search of the country's finest at its source. We're in Leuven and it looks so amazing. And this is actually the home of Stella. Leuven is a beautiful town. It's so quaint and apparently it's like a medieval town. So there's a lot of old buildings that have been revamped. I like it. Charmaine, to me, our final two. Welcome. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm sure you will recognize Esti from our previous challenge. She's the marketing manager here at Stella Artois. Welcome, ladies, and thank you for joining us at the original home of Stella Artois here in Leuven. And next to her, we have Tom, who's a beer connoisseur here at Stella Artois. Welcome, ladies. Being inside this brewery, you can just feel the history of it. The Stella Artois name that we toast to every single day comes from Sébastien Artois, who purchased the brewery in 1717. But I'm sure, like me, you're wondering, Tom, who is Stella? Well, Stella is definitely not a who. It's uh, the Latin word for star, and star comes out of the Christmas story. As Stella Artois was brewed as a Christmas beer done in 1926. Tom gives us a bit of history about Stella and the fact that Stella is star in Latin, and Artois is the name of the brewery. What makes Stella Artois a celebratory beer? Well, at, at that point, the beers that people drank was definitely not what the lager beer tasted and looked like. So it was pretty new on the market and was thirst quenching, refreshing beer, lager beer, bottom fermented, and therefore it was new. And due to the success of that Christmas beer, uh, the brewery decided to keep brewing the beer for the whole year. So we drink Christmas beer 365 days a year. And, you know, Stella Artois is this beer that was brewed for the city of Leuven over the holiday period as a gift to the city. And it makes every occasion more special, which is why it's perfect for the holidays. And in South Africa, we're bringing family and friends together over the holiday season with Stella Artois. And it's just going to make your occasion so much more special. What started as a gift to the town of Leuven, the Stella Brewmasters ended up influencing a nation continent and eventually the world. Now that's how a taste master does it. I didn't realize that there was so much history and prestige behind the Stella brand and the fact that it was first brewed as a Christmas beer, that's very exciting. As we're running around we happen to find this beautiful little restaurant and we end up having lunch there. It's such an amazing moment. The beer, the food, great pairing. From the town of Laverne to the beautiful city of Brussels, there awaiting you is the beautiful and incredible, very magical Christmas market. We want you to use that as an inspiration for creating your ultimate occasion back home in South Africa. We want you to take a special ingredient, decor, or surprise secret element and then incorporate that into your dish, something that we're not used to back home. But remember that back home, our festive season is tied to summer, whereas here, it's tied to the magical winter. And also, we will be helping you out with 200 euros to shop in the market. So use that wisely, because this is your final challenge, and one of you will be the ultimate taste master. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I'm actually looking forward to this challenge, and hopefully, I get to show people who I really am. It's cold outside, I'm in a nice cozy restaurant, enjoying a nice meal, catching up over some beer. It's so beautiful, I've even forgotten that I'm in a challenge. Coming up, Charmaine finds her happy place in a chocolate-making masterclass. Tui falls head over heels for biscuits, but is their menu any clearer? For a chance to follow Tumi and Charmaine with a foodie's dream trip for two to Belgium, enter the draw by tweeting a picture or video of yourself watching the show using the hashtag Start with Estella. Entries close at midnight tonight. T's and C's apply. Day two meant business. Brussels is such a vibrant city. You can just tell by the energy. You know, the people are like on the move. It is extremely cold. 
but there's just this vibrant energy that's exciting. I'm seeing a lot of architectural details as I walk around and something tells me I need to try and incorporate it into my harvest table. I'm in awe of all the gold. Know, right? It's like it's raining gold <laughs> dust. Golden snowflakes or something. Yeah. And all the colours, man. The reds, the gold, the green. Reminds me of South Africa. <laughs> I'm walking around looking at the storefronts and I get inspired by this beautiful red creation. This colour is popping, it's festive and it can be quite premium, so that's my direction. Tumi's nose led her straight to the most renowned biscuit and coffee shop in Belgium. I came here because Maison d'Andois is highly recommended, one of the best places to get these speculous biscuits. Um, can I please try one actually? One thing I can tell you is that it tastes like Christmas. The speculous biscuits taste a lot like vanilla biscuits, but with a lot more sugar in them. This reminds me of Christmas morning when my grandmother was making tea and biscuits. I'm actually going to use the speculous biscuits in my dessert, as well as the speculous paste. I could make the ice cream base, have tea in it, and then make, put, the cris yeah, put these biscuits inside, and then top it off with a cookie batter that they have, which is also speculous flavored. Yeah, I'm gonna have a packet, please. Yeah. Thank you. Christmas for me means a time to spend with family. It's time to just relax, but it's also a time to indulge. So I know with Christmas, there's lots of food and cooking. So it's my happy time of the year. What is this? Kubadon. Hmm. Ultimate Belgian confection. Mm, it's like jelly, it's infused with like lots of fruit and it's sugar on the outside, and nice and gooey on the inside. Wow. This is so delicious. Oh my gosh, there's such a wide variety of chocolate flavors and textures. It's, it's interesting. I mean, how do you get this? It's an actual chocolate tool. Maybe, maybe that's how I should make my ornaments. Belgian chocolate, especially the darker variety, has got multiple uses. So you can use it in sauces, you can use it, of course, in desserts, but I'm thinking of incorporating that in my gravy. Charmaine promptly struck a gold in a chocolate-making class. It's such an honor to be in a master class with well-renowned chocolatier, Lauren. He's showing us how to use chocolate, how to make molds, how to use the molds, which toppings go on it. It's like literally the best experience, chocolate experience that I've ever had. So this is the mold that you can buy to make uh, pralines, okay? So what you do is first you do, uh, you fill it completely. Then you will have to shake it to take out the bubbles. It's really important to take all the bubbles, otherwise you have little holes in the chocolate. And then we put it in the fridge. And once it's cold, we can uh, do the filling with cream, hazelnut, uh, ganache, uh, whatever we like. That's the tip of the day. <laughs> I absolutely love making desserts, so learning from the best was definitely a memorable experience. Hearing there was such a fan of their biscuits in town, the Dandois family agreed to meet up with Tumi at their original bakery in Rue Albert on the Grand Place. It's so beautiful in here. I can smell the biscuits baking. And they've actually used some of the biscuits as decor, which is quite interesting. I've managed to track down the seventh generation baker of the Speculos biscuits or cookies for Maison Dandois. Alison, what makes the Speculos biscuits such a significant element of the Belgian culture? It starts from the, even before the creation of Belgium. So since the Middle East, this Speculos, this biscuit is a part of that tradition of Saint Nicholas. So for the 6th December, when children receive a toy because they want a very uh, kind during the year, and so for the 6th December, that was the tradition to offer that to the child. And it's, that's why it's so important here in Belgium. 
And is there a special technique that I need to use in terms of making it, making sure it doesn't break apart? Yeah, but that starts from the raw material, so okay. good water, excellent sugar, and a mix of spices, cinnamon and clove. Oh, okay. Okay. And then you have to put the dough in the molds. So I recommend to use some butter. Okay. You put some butter before. Before. During a few hours, you infuse the butter in the wood. The, in the mold. Yes. I can't wait to try it myself, actually, because I'm going to try and recreate it. Hopefully, I get it right. The signature spice that's used in the speculose biscuits has a lot of cinnamon and cloves and star anise. I could actually use that in my savory dishes as well. The home of cooking is a definite foodie must do. It's got like so many different appliances and gadgets that you can use in your cooking, so this is like really exciting me. Hi there, is there anything I can help you with? Yes, um, so I'm looking to make speculos biscuits because I know they a signature traditional biscuit in, in Belgium. I take it these are the molds, but I don't know which ones you can actually suggest. So this is St. Nicholas, okay. this is what you could use as your speculous mold. And so basically what you do is you first start with your olive oil, any kind of oil, you put it in there, so you make sure that the dough doesn't stick. Okay. Then you sprinkle some flour on it, and then you press your dough into the mold. Okay. After that you slap it the other side so the dough comes yes. out, okay. and then that you can actually put in the oven and it's good to go. And then we've got our specific spices that we use in Belgium too. So You've got Make that it. here as well? Yeah, we do, yeah. Awesome. I'll we'll definitely come and get that from you, but I'll, I think I'll take this most. Awesome. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm looking for gadgets that will help me uh, interpret the theme and the brief much better. So molds and stuff that can make interesting textures. I'm in Shopping Haven right now. There's so many things to look at gorgeous gadgets and I came across this beautiful mold which I think will work really well with my lace detail. Belgian is known for lace and uh, that's what I'm going to be using to just add a bit of something different to my table. I've been planning to use the gingerbread mix spice for my speculose cookies but you could actually use the spice for a savory dish. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flavor my meat with this spice. So not only is it going to be sweet, it's also going to be savory. I mean, the reason I'm doing it is my grandmother used to always come up with great ideas on how to mix different spices for different things. So why not bring it home? I'm definitely taking this one. Gold sugar. This will look really cool on my dessert. Just a sprinkle of gold dust. Gold sugar, who knew? I'm definitely making a Christmas list to send to Santa with some of the items that are in this shop. It is a bittersweet moment for me, being that I'm here for the first time in Belgium and I'm here to get inspiration for the final and the person I'm with here is Charmaine, very close friend, but at the same time, one of us has to win it. So. Let's see how this goes. One thing I know for sure is that the Belgians are very well known for their lace and being here I'm getting ideas in terms of how I can decorate my cake. I'm thinking of using something like this to do some icing on top of my Christmas cake to give it that bit of a Belgian touch. A lot of the architecture here has a lot of height and definition. And that makes me think about how I'm gonna decorate my table. I need to make it appealing to everyone that's looking at it because that's the one thing that's caught my eye since being here. Everything just looks so beautiful. It has a story to tell. And I want my table to tell a story as well about me. The secret ingredient I've seen in all of the Belgian cooking is love. They make sure that every dish, as simple as it is, comes from the heart. And that's how I'll be cooking. That's the inspiration I'll be taking from this. That love lights up the city after dark at one of the capital's landmark festive events. The Christmas market is quite interesting. There's a lot of different vendors, a lot of different stalls, some making waffles, some making savory dishes. It feels like Christmas. The Belgian Christmas market is buzzing. I mean, you can definitely feel the Christmas vibe. 
There's lots on offer. There's different types of cuisines and there's entertainment. I've actually never experienced something like this or anything like this ever. So Dumi, how does it feel being here? Your first time out of the country and experiencing the Christmas market? You don't understand, like I'm just starstruck. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's completely different to South Africa. Like, I understand it's a festive and Christmas. Very and different that. from what we experienced <laughs> last week, actually. I know, right? Like, the market is completely different. There's such a variety of food here, and there's one guy who's got a salami stand. He's infused figs into his salami. Oh, wow. Mm. This is delicious. The fig definitely You can taste the fig. Mm. We'll go nice with, like, a nice drink. A red wine. Like wine. Red wine would work. Probably one of the best things I've tasted in a while. I'm trying out mostly the Belgian food because I want to get acquainted with it. And a lot of potatoes used in their dishes. So I guess because it's cold, it's comfort food. So that's great. The ham is so it's flavorful. Mm. It's not overpowering the, the rest of the dish. And lots of cheese. <laughs> you can say it no reminds to me of that. potato salad, actually. Oh yeah, the creaminess, right? Yeah. Let's go eat. <laughs> this place is so festive. <laughs> it eh? is, right? Ah, oh, I'm so inspired. It just put so much pressure on us to bring that festive back home, man. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to feed them Christmas. Yeah, definitely. All I want for Christmas is food. <laughs> I'm honestly not that confident at this point because I'm just all over the place. I still need a bit of direction in terms of where I'm headed with my dishes. So that's making me a bit uneasy. I've got a lot of inspiration now. And I know that I'm going to make my dishes South African, but with a Belgian twist. Belgium has been absolutely amazing. I mean, I can't wait to go back home and get inspired and just start creating dishes. This Belgian experience has been a lot of fun, experiencing a European Christmas and all. But the truth is, I need to get ready to win this competition. Let's go home now. I need to win this. Coming up, will our final two be inspired or terrified by this week's double Michelin star rated mentor? Toomey decides to freeze something hot. Charmaine rethinks a classic. Make occasions more special. Start with a Stella. Fully defrosted from Belgium, the girls were walking on sunshine. I'm feeling very, very confident going into this final. I've shown a couple of my cards, not all of them, but I feel like this challenge, the next challenge we're going to go to, is the one that's going to allow me to get the hole in one. It's challenge time. I am feeling energetic. I'm feeling like I could really do this. I'm just ready to tackle whatever comes my way. Contestants, welcome back home. The stage is the Conservatory, one of the most internationally sought-after venues for special occasions. Here to also help you bridge between the famous food in Belgium and our very own South African cuisine is someone who has created over 20 shows and sold over 4 million books. Please help me welcome our guest judge and double Michelin star chef, Pete Hazengreit. I'm super excited to have a Michelin, double Michelin star chef to mentor me. Wow, that is quite an honor. This chef has two Michelin stars, has sold over four million books, and he gets to be my mentor. I'm definitely taking this one. So my food philosophy is to make something very tasty from who you are and where you're from, your territory. You must never forget from where you are and who you are. Naturally, we need food to feed us. If you think like that, you're not a taste master. You don't have to eat to be alive. You have to eat for pleasure, for that moment that gets you happy. You see one table and you say, wow, everybody is happy. I must say, I see myself standing there like 30 years ago, but I see you're very nervous. Don't be nervous. It's your worst enemy. 
for this contest. I'm taken aback by Pete when he tells us that we should just relax. I mean, he has a man with an impressive resume and he's just telling us to enjoy the moment and just relax. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Using all the skills you've learned throughout your journey, you will now be required to create a Belgian-inspired festive feast, consisting of a starter, a main, and a dessert for approximately 14 people. Your guests will consist of past guest judges, mentors, the who's who of the chef industry, as well as food stylists, who all share your obsession with making an occasion more special. So you will be start on innovation, taste, presentation, hosting, and atmosphere, okay? The chef Pete will judge you on what you bring to the table, but first, he's here for you, so he'll mentor you and speak to you on food and inspiration. With all the previous challenges, I was a lot more nervous. I'm actually coming into this one a lot more confident. Now I'm realizing that this is really going to be a, a battle for my life. Heading over to Woolworths to get the rest of my stuff. I'm thinking of my color scheme, I'm thinking of the seasonality of produce, I'm thinking of like what's relevant right now. I'm looking for chicken. I mean, what's a Christmas feast without chicken, right? Oh wow, deboned chicken. This is awesome. I mean, no bones means less cooking time, so this is a great option. First things first, I need to start off with my beef wellington, so it's getting the best cut of fillet. And I think this beef fillet is going to be perfect because it will be nice and succulent and it's also dry aged, which means that there's a lot of flavor packed into it. I absolutely love this time of year. I mean, it's so festive. It's that time of the year, fruit cakes. Oh wow, what's this? I see these beautiful chocolate thingies with gold spray, gold theme, awesome. Chalky Tiffins, what's that? Moist chocolate brownie with crunchy biscuits, chocolate hexagon, and chocolate fudge. Ooh, I've got to get that. My colors for my harvest table are red, white, and gold, and I'm seeing a lot of red here. Oh, wow. A Christmas tree, a red one at that. I think this is going to be pretty. I'm seeing these gorgeous Christmas trees. They're red and they've got fairy lights. So I think I'm gonna have a couple of those, maybe two or three. That is the, just the touch that I need. There's such a variety of items here. I, I'm so spoiled for choice. I already knew while I was in Belgium which color scheme I'm going with. And it's nice to see that a lot of the colors I've chosen, black and gold, are actually here. So now I just need to get the right things that'll actually stand out. Oh. Wow, these have caught my attention, actually. Because my theme is black and gold, and like I said, modern contemporary, I'm not trying to keep it too traditional. So, some green, actually, because I mean, Christmas, Christmas trees are green, so these will add a lot of color, actually. Let's take them. My mind is racing. I've got all my ingredients, I've got the plan set out. I'm just worried about time. Game face on. Shopping is done, I've got everything that I need. Now I need to get cooking. Right now, I'm feeling a little excited. Um, we're in the final, I'm with my girl Charmaine, and it feels good. I'm actually just looking forward to, to serving the people, I guess. Maybe the nerves will get me later, but right now, I'm just going with the flow and enjoying this moment. The Belgium trip was very insightful. I mean, I learned a lot. The one thing that I know will probably impress is this syrup de lige. It's basically like an apple butter. So there's apple, there's pears. I don't want to reveal too much because, you know, you never know. Why is she hiding things from me? Aren't we friends anymore? The Belgian trip for me was quite amazing, being that it was the first time I'd actually left the country. I took a lot of inspiration from the architecture, the landscaping and all of that, just how different the fixtures were and how beautiful they actually were. And I'm trying to create that with my harvest table. So while I was in Belgium, I managed to get the secret spice that I'm going to be using for my speculose biscuits, as well as the speculose paste. So I'm going to be using it in my dessert. Right now I'm decorating my beef wellington and uh, I've used this gadget that I got in Belgium to give it like that lace effect. 
I'm getting started with my glue vine, which is a signature Belgian drink, which is actually red wine infused with a couple of different things. Like in this instance, it would be sugar, orange, orange peels, some cinnamon. I'm squeezing some of the orange juice out, as well as uh, cloves. It's, it's basically warmed up wine. They drink it hot. I'm gonna make it as ice lollies that are gonna be served cold. So I would need to obviously adjust my sugar content to make sure that it actually sits because if it doesn't have enough sugar, it won't sit in the freezer. Now I'm putting the last ingredient inside, which is the red wine, and basically just let it boil for a bit and then let it simmer. And then we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it turns out the way it's supposed to and tastes like Belgium. Okay, Jermaine, that's your station. What inspiration brought you Belgium? I loved the food, the architecture, the fashion and everything that is happening in there. And uh, what I liked mostly was lace. Oh, and did apparently... you go to Bruges? No, no. We didn't. this is Brussels lace. Wow. So the lace inspired me to go with a beef wellington. So that's the South African part of the food then. If you say Belgium, you say mussels, you say chocolate, you say prawns, you say beer, you say waffles. Pete's telling me that I need to incorporate a little bit more Belgian-inspired flavors in my dishes is a bit of a curveball. I mean, I'm a bit nervous right now because time is of the essence and it's going to be tough. One little tip. Mm -hmm. If this is your station, I want to see the station clean. I can't work like that. It's so messed. So, Chumi. Hi, Chef. What uh, inspiration brought you Belgium? I have a couple of different things. So here we've got speculos. We've ah, got the speculos. speculos. Yes. <laughs> the biscuits and the paste, which it's I'm going to be using. It's the most Belgian cookies of all cookies. Correct. So I wanted to make sure I nice, keep that yes. original. We always have trifles at Christmas with my family, so I wanted to make sure that I bring that Belgian flavor to it. What else do you have? <laughs> One of them is Glühwein, which I'm going to be serving as an ice popsicle. My twist on it is that I'm going to actually be serving it with ginger beer as well. So, <laughs> try to think Belgian with a South African twist. Thumbs up. Thank okay. you. I've taken the advice from Chef Pete regarding my workstation, so I'm tidying up to make sure that I'm clear focused and um, I think that was actually good advice. I'm just tying up my lamb for my lamb roast, which is gonna go into the oven tomorrow, first thing in the morning. I just put all the marinade and the flavors in tonight because I wanted to marinate overnight and I'm just tying it up so that it doesn't fall apart. It's a new day tomorrow. I need to make sure I've got my day planned correctly. Otherwise, time will get away from me and then I might just miss it. So I just need to make sure I plan correctly. I've done most of the prep for today. My meat is marinated. My Wellington turned out really well. It's just a matter of getting some sleep and hoping that tomorrow goes really well. Next, can Zumi wrestle a savory jus from Belgian chocolate? And will Pavlovas be the stuff of Charmaine's dreams or nightmares? Fancy a trip for two to Belgium, the birthplace of Stella Artois? You can still enter tonight. For your chance to be on that plane to Brussels, enter the draw by tweeting a picture or video of yourself watching the Tastemaster using the hashtag start with a Stella. Entries close at midnight tonight. T's and C's apply and can be found on the tastemaster.co.za. Game day brings the jitters. It's a new day. We've just got into the kitchen, getting ready to finish up. I'm a bit nervous because I'm stressed about time, but luckily I made that list and I've prioritized the most important things. Game face on. Right now, I'm making my pavlovas. Hopefully, they don't stick to the baking paper like the first time I made them. These are going to be strawberry pavlovas uh, because my table is going to be red, so I want something, you know, that's going to pop up and add some more color, vibrant colors. It's a big day, but taking Chef Pete's advice, relax and enjoy the moment. Right 
right now, I'm just getting all the smaller things out of the way, getting one of my dips ready for my cheese platter. And then I'm gonna get started with the rest of the big things like putting my meat in the oven to cook. This hard work better pay off. I'm in a competition with myself. I see Charmaine and all, but I'm more scared about me. I need to make sure I deliver. This is my roast lamb, uh, which I've marinated and brined with the special spice that I got from, from Belgium. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm trying to seal in the moisture, so I need to make sure I have that crust on the outside, and then I'm gonna put it in the pressure cooker for about two, two and a half hours. So this is called double boiling. It's a way of melting the chocolate without burning it, so you need to make sure that also the bowl doesn't touch the water. Everything is going okay. I'm running out of time, I understand. It's just that I feel like I might need to leave a few things out. So if I can just make sure that those speculous biscuits are done. Right now I'm working on my Christmas mince pies. I'm gonna dip them in a bit of dark chocolate, uh, milk chocolate, and maybe some white chocolate. A nice gift for the guests that are coming today something that they can take away and share with their loved ones. Time is ticking and I have to make my beef wellington. I have to make my trout, there's so much, but I'm trying as much as I can just to stay in the moment, make sure that I focus on the task at hand and just put out as many dishes, best dishes as possible. I've chosen red, gold and white for my festive table because I think those are the colours that are very Christmassy. I mean, everywhere you go, especially in Belgium, there was a lot of red, so I was inspired by that. A lot of gold everywhere. I've started decorating my table, so I'm just adding a little bit, a couple of touches here and there because um, it feels a bit empty, so I'm just adding a couple of things to make it a bit fuller. It's obviously going to look fuller once the food is on there. It's just that I need to try and make it look attractive for whoever that walks in. I've chosen to go with a more modern, contemporary feel. So the colours that I'm getting, the shapes, and actually, because the architecture of Belgium, remember, I need to make sure that that comes through. This is my chart. I think I'm gonna do it just before we start serving because it just needs to go in the oven for 60 minutes. So I'm just gonna put a mussel sauce over it. Hello. Hi, Hi chef. chef. How are you? Hi, What's chef. up? So I see the chocolate, that's okay. I see mussels, that's okay. So I see a lot of Belgian stuff. Yes, yeah, so good. I, I took your advice. You listen to me. Yeah. I also see you listen to me like your station is clean. I like that. Chocolate I saw here. Yes, so I've taken some Christmas mince pies. Yes. And I've covered them in, this is the dark chocolate and this is the milk chocolate. I guess you, you, you put your chocolate a, a bit too hot there. It crystallizes, and then you can not do anything with it, you see? Even when it's warm, then it's, it gets hard. But you're doing quite nice. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chef. I love your decoration there for yeah, Christmas. Sort of Christmas. Okay, Chumi, what are you doing? Uh, I'm getting busy with my speculoos biscuits. Wow. So... I see they're for Christmas there. Yes. That's your speculoos? Yes. Did you put some bicarbonate in it? Uh, not yet. Huh? No, I didn't. Do I need to? Also, always a little bit, then they touch the, the heat and they come a little bit up. Okay. They're like more air, Fluffy. more air in it. Okay. And for all the rest, how far are you? Uh, I think I might be falling behind a bit because I still have a lot of work to do. Um, so I'm getting a bit worried, actually. But with all the to be happy. <laughs> huh? If only it was that easy, Chef. The chicken, I, I don't need too long to cook that, so I'm going to do that for like 45 minutes. Okay. I'm just finishing up the savory and these... As you veggies. talk, you seem very ready. <laughs> Looks are deceiving. <laughs> That's always what you have to do. Show the world you're ready. Even if you're not ready, I'm ready. Okay. Okay? I'm ready, Chef. That's good <laughs> to me. Okay, thumbs up. Thank you, Chef.
Uh, my meringues are done and I'm happy with how they look. Perfect. So I'm just going to make sure that they get nice and cool before I use them. I've got two roulades that have pork in them and then I've got one that doesn't have pork. I'm about to wrap this chicken up and then put it in the oven to bake for about an hour because I need the entire chicken to be fully cooked. Most of the prep is done, but now the cooking needs to get uh, underway. So I need to start off with my beef wellington because it needs to sear on the outside and then it goes in the freezer just to cool down a bit. So Pete, how's it going back in the kitchen? I think they are doing well with what they're doing, but extremely nervous. I try to say them not to be nervous, but <laughs> it's your worst enemy in the kitchen, you know that. Yeah. But did you feel like other whole they followed the brief with like mixing the Belgium yes, culture, yes. the feast and the South African way? I have seen some Belgium things, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. so, as much as you would like. Yes. like, like so no fries, no mussels. I have seen mussels. That's okay, okay, so we already have like one thing. Yes. <laughs> okay, no waffles. But, but I didn't see a waffle, so I saw chocolate. And also we must remember that, you know, the inspiration is Belgium, but they are creating a ultimate feast in South Africa. Yes. So it's got to have their personality in it yeah. as well. So yeah, I guess And they're also like South African, so there's always going to yeah. be like a predominance of like, yeah. you know, Absolutely. South Africa first, yeah. you know. I'm excited to see what, they, what they've got in store. Which is also a very large mix of cultures. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I think that they're going to do well. well as long as there's Belgium chocolate, then I'll be happy because this needs to be ticked box. Can you believe my pavlovas were stuck to the baking paper yet again? I don't know what I did wrong this time, but gosh, I don't think I'll ever make a pavlova ever again. My meringues are a total flop. And, you know, this is like such a crucial time. Things are just not coming together. <laughs> And uh, I've seen people arrive already and, whew. Plan B is store bought meringues. I mean, what else can I do? The chicken has turned out perfectly, so I'm just taking it out now because I don't want to overcook it. Just need to take this one back in for a couple more minutes. At this point, I'm not really so concerned about styling and making things look pretty. I just want to get as many dishes out as possible, so yeah. This is the chocolate I got in Belgium. I'm using it in my lamb jus. Let me try it. The combination of the flavors is completely out. Still not it. I need more salt. I'm a little confused. I don't know what it tastes like now. I'm winning on certain dishes, not really winning on other dishes, but in general, I'm happy with what I'm putting out. I'm definitely feeling the hits in the kitchen. This has been quite a day. I mean, things didn't go according to plan. I didn't get everything that I wanted uh, to be done. At this point, I'm just trying to do as much as I can so that I'm able to present something to the judges. My trout is done, my duck is done, my beef wellington is still in the oven. I hope that will come out right. I take my wellington out of the oven and it looks amazing. I'm happy with that, so that's a tick. I wanted medium rare, but I'll only know once the judges cut into it, so very risky. Okay, so slowly but surely it's coming together. Try to fix that jus as best as I can. Okay. It might work. Let's try, actually. It works. It actually works. I'm feeling a lot more confident now that most of my main dishes are up to par, so feeling happy. To me, Charmaine, your time is up. Your guests are here and it's time for you to go greet them. So please put down your knives and let the hosting begin. Five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Kumi, it's 
time. Well done. It's time, eh? Oh, high five. Let's do this. We did the best we could do. We did, eh? <laughs> Next, two uber creative female foodies contest the final. And that's already cause for celebration. But who's your bet to seal the deal? Make occasions more special. Start with a Stella. Returning for the finale were guest judges and former contestants, each sensing a mixed spice of energy and anxiety. It feels great to be back here. It feels like homecoming, seeing my friends. It feels like we've known each other forever. I see them through the journey of this program and it's unbelievable the way they have grown. It feels amazing. Okay, so I just arrived at the finale. Charmaine and Chumi are busy cooking the inside, wishing them luck. Nice seeing everybody, I mean, it was a foodie family and it's so nice to see everybody. Everybody looks good, everybody is excited to see the final. But I feel like some people are wishing it was them. <laughs> Everyone's together for the final. We are definitely rooting for all of us except the other two. No, just kidding. But yeah, we hope that one of the girls is going to take the prize home. Who, we don't know yet. We do know it's such a cool experience up until this point. It's very Christmassy, so it's, yeah, no, it's beautiful. Nice colors. Yeah. It feels like a hug. I'm just excited <laughs> to see what they're cooking. I don't know about you, but I'm really yeah, hungry. <laughs> I feel like you can't really choose. It's like a 50-50, mm, I suppose. Mm, mm, I think it's strong. anyone's game. I think it just depends on the challenge and who exactly. interprets the brief. Oh, and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. These ladies are fantastic, they're phenomenal, and we really stand behind the both of them. Whoever takes it really will be so proud because they're incredible ladies. It's good, it's good to know mm. that there's woman you power. Know, you know. So we're happy about right. that. We are, we are. <laughs> I'm expecting a three-course meal, something different. I'm expecting Charmaine to do something that goes in line with the dessert and then Trimi to go with the main. But I'm a bit undecided. I'm not sure who's going to provide what, but I'm ready for anything. It's tough to say who I'm rooting for. My heart of hearts would want Charmaine to win, being that old foodie background, but Chumi has been on this upward slope. But then again, it could be the curse of the two chalices, because once you win two chalices, off you go. <laughs> I'm rooting for Charmaine because I think she has the personality for this job. Chumi's amazing chef, but I think Charmaine will take it. Gentlemen, I present to you our taste master finalist, to me and Charmaine. Hi everyone, welcome. Every special occasion starts with Estella, and today we'd like to welcome you to the beautiful conservatory for our Christmas feast. Cheers. We're almost ready to serve, so if you could all please come in, take your seat, and I hope you're hungry. <laughs> Starving. <laughs> <laughs> it's go time. I've done what I had to do. Let's see how it goes. I'm proud of myself. I managed to pull it off. My table looks festive and all my dishes are there. So, pat on the back. My harvest table looks beautiful. But I've got one more surprise. I know it's supposed to be Belgian themed, but I always like to bring it back home. So I'm gonna show people who I am. I make my grand entrance a beautiful Sutu princess. Everyone loves it. It was important for me to merge the Belgian theme through the food but also to bring in my culture, because this is who I am and this is how people should know me. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, judges. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity. I'd like to present to you my harvest table. It is a Belgian-inspired South African Christmas harvest table with a lot of Belgian influence, but as I like to do, I brought it home. As you can see here, we have a couple of poiki pots. Inside those poiki pots are the beef stew, it is something that we always have on Christmas Day with my family, so I couldn't leave it out. The nerves 
are getting to me. I can literally hear my voice shaking, but I'm proud of it. I mean, I actually enjoy every single moment of it. There's a special spice that is used in, uh, in Belgium that is normally used in speculos. And instead of put putting it in the speculos, I decided to marinate and cook my lamb with that spice. And I also use it a bit in the beef jus. I also have for you here a speculos trifle. Every family occasion that we celebrate, there is always trifle. And in this instance, I took it to Belgium and I put it in a log-shaped design because that's signature to Belgium, they desserts. And Christmas reminds me of biscuits and tea with my grandmother. And so I had to make your Ceylon tea ice cream infused with cookies inside. All the other elements are signature to my family and I, potato salad, couscous, please do enjoy. Thank you so much. My biggest concern is, did I really explain who I am? Was I able to merge the two cultures together? Did I take Belgium and South Africa and put it into one? Chef, are you being transported back to Belgium as you take a bite? No. <laughs> okay. I love the potato salad. It's roast yeah. potatoes and sweet potatoes. Very South African to have potato Very salad as part of your, rustic your table, but she's changed it up and elevated it, which I like. The beef stew is delicious. Well cooked, really yeah, flavorful. Like yeah. That's a very nice idea. Oh, you like that. Those glühwein lollies and my speculoos trifle, that definitely is going to get me over the finish line. This is it. There's no turning back now. The judges look like they're about to tear me apart, but the people look happy to see me, so that warms me up. Hello, judges. Hello, Shomei. Hello, Hello everyone. <laughs> uh, welcome to my Glam Foodie Feast, Christmas feast. So what I've prepared for you and what was inspired by my travels in Belgium is the beautiful trout, which is served with some mussels because mussels is quite a huge sensation back in Belgium. My grandmother was an avid recipe book collector. So with Christmas, she was always trying out as many different recipes as possible. So. I try to incorporate that into my feast. You know, it's not traditionally South African, but it speaks to me. A Wellington is actually one of my grandmother's favorite dishes she used to make for Christmas. And the pattern is similar to a Brussels lace. I think my presentation is going really well. I mean, I'm trying to keep as calm as possible, but, you know, the nerves keep, you know, getting in there. Dessert? is a bouche de Noël. Yes. Which is a traditional Belgian uh, Christmas cake. And this is a no booze Belgian Christmas cake, so everyone can enjoy. And then, last mm. but not least, Christmas pies were a staple in our home. So I hated them as a kid, so I tried to innovate with them and I made Christmas balls, if I can call them that. Uh, so it's basically a mince pie that's been formed into a bowl and covered with some Belgian chocolate and added a bit of shimmer because, well, I'm glam foodie. Ooh, wow. <laughs> well done. Enjoy. I'm so relieved that my presentation is over. Whew, now I can breathe. What I can say is that she cooked the elements very well. Yeah, yeah the everything. The trout, the trout is really good. Cool. It's like not over, awesome. not over well. Yeah. It's still like, you know, pink as we call it, like in the middle. Mm -hmm. The beef is still fine because that's like easy, can be like overcooked. The dough is okay, but yeah, the sweetness, we have to like, you know, balance it with the sauce. I wonder if the judges actually like my dishes. I know my desserts are a bit of a letdown, but I hope that they'll see a new side of me with my main dishes. La bûche de Noël, okay? Non-alcoholic, she said. It tastes like fruitcake. I see now that my sugar level tomorrow will be like two. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in all the challenges, I never got to taste any of Charmaine's dishes. And I know she's really good with flavor. I'm concerned, um, but I'm also very proud of my dishes. Look, 
I've done my best. Next, a marathon of tasks and challenges run over six weeks and two continents enters the final straight and it's still neck and neck. Every aspiring Tastemaster needs help washing up. And here's your chance to win a LG Quad Wash Steam Dishwasher. To enter, retweet the competition post on the Tastemaster SA Twitter page. Entries close at midnight tonight. T's and C's apply. Make occasions more special. Start with a Stella. Now for the voice of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, while our judges deliberate, I'd like to welcome back our finalists to host you for this wonderful Fest of Delight. Looking at where both the ladies started to where they are now, there is a lot of growth and you can see how they've both developed as chefs and as foodies. Cara, hey, my darling. This looks amazing. Uh, what stood out for me is the ability for them to produce such food given limited time and it showed a lot of growth. Nice to see you again. <laughs> so here is a smoked trout and some mussels. Looks beautiful by the way. Thank you. Charmaine did very well. The ambiance was there, the colours, the flavours were all there. Trumi just took it home. Everything that she prepared was homemade. It tasted like home, really. I'm hosting my guest. I'm enjoying every single moment. I mean, the nerves are over now, literally just cruising. I'm having fun hosting my festive harvest table. I mean, people are loving the food. It's a good vibe, it's good energy, and I'm so happy. I think my dinner looks amazing! Right, chefs, time to deliberate. Yes. So, overall, what did you think of Tumi's? Overall, I'm amazed what they did. And in general, I think both sides didn't have enough Belgian stuff. There is like a chocolate sauce, but does it work on that lamb? No. You can try something but you don't try something on a, in a final of a taste master. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? But you know, we, we encourage them to be innovative. So maybe yeah. the final of taste master is where you take a risk. To me, did incorporate the Belgian ingredient. Maybe not as much as you would have wanted her to, but in terms of the brief, I think she fulfilled the brief. Yeah, I agree Should also. Break? I mean, like, you know, it, it was like you said, it was like one ingredient. And, and what I like is that it, she didn't take like a standard ingredient, you know, like mussels or like fries, yeah. you know. They actually took like a speculoos, which is very specific from like, you know, from Belgium. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like a nice touch to like, you know, do a bit of research and not just take the, you know, stereotype uh, ingredients. I, what I like about it is like, it, you know, it's got a true identity. Mm -hmm. It is to me, it is her dish, it is her family, you know, she came, the atmosphere was great, I love the table, uh, I think, had, you know, really like it, it yeah. showed who she is. Mm. Yes, because for a taste master, we're looking for somebody who has the personality, who can finesse and, you know, sell food to us without us tasting it, and I think that Tumi definitely has that talent. Shumi's table was very, really my grandmother's amazing dish that I would eat, and I feel like Charmaine was a celebration of and flavors really innovative. and yes. bright and there was different flavors and I felt like it was an experience a different experience yeah. something that I wouldn't just be able to eat at home That's I feel day. like it's a very tough decision you know, it is it's, a tough it's very 50 50 mm. I feel Whoa. let's let's actually look at it realistically we're yeah. looking at someone who's going to be presenting yeah. who's going to be hosting and yeah, making def, food def. it's also a matter of what do I want to get out of a show that I well out of someone who I'm watching on, on television yeah so amazing to see such a, a level of creativity and, and real, real authenticity coming through. I really enjoyed the food, I must say. I had the opportunity to experience two young individuals who have really given such an incredible spin on the food and working with our product has been phenomenal to see how they've interpreted it and really sort of taking it to a different level. I must say when, when Tumi came out, I mean, what an, what an oh. announcement of how to be African. And yeah, it was very, very beautiful. Yeah, but it just kind of brought me down to grassroots, yeah. like Omar's cooking. I mean, the flavours were amazing mm. and the, you know, couscous was beautiful and fluffy. Yeah. I don't think I can make couscous like that. Yeah. But yet going to Charmaine's table, I was really, really inspired. Mm. 
because she just she just took that level of innovation for me yeah. and technique wise. I mean, how's that beef wellington? Yeah, that was delicious, and the trout was yeah. beautifully cooked. Right, on to Charmaine's dishes. Uh, the cooking uh, techniques are like, are like great, you know, she, she shows some skills. The temperatures are like correct, you know, it's not easy to make a beef wellington. It's not easy to, cure, to cook like a whole trout, a duck also. For me, uh, less identity on the dish. I feel like it's a bit all over the place. You have a beef wellington, it's not yeah. Belgium, it's not South African. The only ingredient is the mussel that really like bring, uh, you know, Belgium to the table. I think that she, she did well, you know, incorporating more than just a few Belgian, you know, yeah. touches. The Brussels sprouts was a really, you know, clever way to clever include idea. it in, yeah, a, it was a, in a very simple way. She taught me about the condiment that she, she used. Yeah. I'm super excited. People love my dishes, especially the trout. That was the winner. They love the sauce, they love the beef wellington, and they love the duck. So, I'm very happy. I think I've done really well. Um, everyone seems to be happy with my harvest table, the flavors, which is very important, because I wanted to make sure that people actually get the gist of what I've tried to put on the table. And it seems like they do, so good luck to me. <laughs> to understand what they had to put out, and, and every dish was prepared differently, was quite remarkable. Having worked with them in Sun City under those conditions and seeing them here, in my mind, there isn't a winner. They're both winners. You know what I'm saying? It's just uh, it's fantastic. Can't, can't be more excited. Mm. You know how exciting it is to produce a show where you're unearthing culinary talent with Dumi and Charmaine making the final cut. The dishes were exceptional, of course, and how they encapsulated the spirit of Christmas in such a beautiful way. And uh, may the best girl win! She, both of them, yeah. brought so many personalities of their own to the plate. And it was just, yeah, I'm glad I'm not to judge. Yeah. Right, chefs, I think we've deliberated enough. I know that I think I've decided on who my winner is. Have you guys decided? I see it in your eyes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, final deliberation, then we deliver the news. Yeah? Correct. Okay. Coming up, the judges can't wait to announce the winner, but they'd rather walk over hot coals than send one of these two home. Who would you let go? Make occasions more special. Start with a Stella. Now to the bittersweet decision of who has risen or fallen just short of glory. Seeing Tumi and Charmaine in the final, I expected it to be the two of them. Um, they've always been strong contenders. Charmaine winning the first challenge. Tumi has always been a bit of a dark horse, but behind the scenes we could see what she was capable of, so I knew that she would be somewhere on the top. Contestants, our judges and esteemed guests have tasted each of your dishes, so congratulations on creating a special occasion. This is the final moment. I am feeling very nervous. You should be proud of yourself. You did your best. There's nothing you can do now, so just enjoy the moment. Congratulations. Thank you so much for putting together those feasts for us. I'm just going to give you each some feedback. To me, we'll start with you. Um, we thought that your presentation was unbelievable. You came out in full force. The flavor of your stew was really, really delicious. We thought that your menu lacked a little bit of finesse in terms of how it was put together. Um, so maybe improve on that for the future. With the food that Dumi created and made as the, at a harvest really spoke to me. I had nostalgic moments and I felt like she really brought home elements that we all can relate to. She really put it on the stage and I loved it and I was incredibly happy for her. Uh, Charmaine, in terms of presentation, a little bit more subdued. We guess that's your style and that's fine. But you know, sometimes you've got to sell it. Sell it to us before we even taste anything. And having said that, your dishes were really, really well cooked. Uh, we loved the way that the Wellington was cooked. But yeah, your proteins really were cooked very well. So thank you so much. Can I go? First of all, I'm uh, honored to be a judge in South Africa as a Belgian. We have a tiny little country, so in this big country, it's an honor for me. It's amazing what you did in two days. This amount of food for this amount of people, amazing. 
I was impressed by the tables, by what you did, how you brought it. The <laughs> was great. <laughs> and and uh, Germaine, her golds will uh, blow like oh. <laughs> it's It's amazing. So I must say, for me, it was very difficult. And I'd say now it's a photo finish. This is it. First there was eight, now there's two. Still nerve-wracking. Well, ladies, congratulations. There was a lot of thoughts and effort that went into both tables. There was like up and down on both tables, so I'll share that with you. I'm so nervous, I'm not even listening to what the judges are saying right now. To me, you came like very strong, you know, you were like proud of like showing your African roots. You really did sell it to me. Some of the dishes, the flavor was like a bit lacking. Two out of your proteins were like overcooked, which was like a bit sad, but I also like the fact that you brought like, you know, ingredients that were not like stereotype of Belgium, you know, the fact of adding like speculos. Otherwise, everything, your desserts were very elegant and the chocolates were very good, so I'm happy about that. That lamb, I knew I shouldn't have served that lamb, but look, <laughs> it is what it is. Charmaine, on your side, level of like cooking techniques was like quite amazing, you know, to pull like a beef wellington um, for so many people. I don't know if you've done it before, but it's quite like a, a difficult task. Your trout also as a whole fish, it's difficult, you know, even like some of the most, the best trained chef still has, you know, issues with it. So well done on that. For me, unfortunately, I felt like it was a bit all over the show and not everything was like, you know, concise together. It felt like there was a lot of different origin, but otherwise everything was great for both of you. Chef Greg thinks that my Wellington was superb and he is impressed that, you know, I can actually cook. So that makes me very happy. There seemed to be a bit more negative on mine and more positive with Charmaine. Oh, maybe I didn't do as well as I thought. Thank you, judges. To me, Charmaine, congratulations on making it this far. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. The winner of the Tastemaster the champion of our final challenge and Afternoon Express's new resident foodie. Phew, this is it. Like, there's no turning back now. I'm literally short-circuiting right now. I, I, I can't, like, I, I can't, I can't. Right, ladies, the winner of the Tastemaster SA is... To me. And the taste master is to me. I'm a winner. I, I can't believe it. I have won the taste master. I won. I am the taste master. Afternoon Express. I'm very happy for Dumi. I think like she really deserves it. She's worked really hard and I think she has the right personality for this job, so kudos to her. I had no idea that she was going to take the cup, but she did, and I'm proud of her. Oh my gosh, so Dumi's name gets called out and I'm like, yay! <laughs> um, I'm very happy that Dumi took it. She worked hard to get to where she is, and she, she deserves it. She was very innovative in uh, her dish. So to her, I'm saying, hey, do your thing, girl. Chubi, three wins now. Well done, you are the taste master. She won that. This has been life-changing. I cannot express how blessed I feel to actually have taken part in this competition. I've made new friends. I've literally been able to connect with people I never would have been able to connect with. I'm happy because I think I did my best. I put myself out there and gave it my all. So to have made it this far, wow, <laughs> proud of myself. The amount of exposure the show has given me makes me realize that anything is possible. Yes, I'm going to be on the Afternoon Express, but there's so much more in store for me. My business, my family, like, it's only onwards and upwards from here. 
It's been a phenomenal couple of weeks with some incredible contestants, but there could only be one winner. We put them through their paces and gave them some tough challenges, and now we have Afternoon Express's new resident foodie and our very first taste master, Tumi, aka Chumi Mukhai. Congratulations, Tumi. There is still time to enter the Tastemaster viewers competition and you could be gifted a trip for two to Belgium, the birthplace of Stella Artois. For your chance at landing this foodie's dream journey, enter the draw by tweeting a picture or video of how you were watching the Tastemaster using the hashtag start with a Stella. Entries close at midnight tonight. T's and C's apply. Another feel-good production.